And then I kept digging because, you know, there's never just one cockroach in the kitchen. So Vista Equity Partners is a private, private equity firm um, where the founder, Robert Smith, got a lot of bad press when he entered into a huge non-prosecution agreement with the Department of Justice related to, I think, the largest case of tax evasion in like IRS history. And the media started talking a lot about that. Um, but whenever somebody gets in the limelight for a wrongdoing, I always try to look what's happened in the past that might have been missed. And if you looked at Vista Equity Partners with any degree of scrutiny, over their history, there's been a few cases where their portfolio companies or managers of their portfolio companies have sued Vista Equity Partners. And the lawsuits, in my opinion, were, were, were pretty damaging to the firm. So in one case, the independent director of a portfolio company owned by Vista was alleging that Vista, that Vista was trying to force one of their healthy portfolio companies to acquire an unhealthy portfolio company at a non-economic valuation. What this independent director said was, you know, in, in an email to the firm that was later released in litigation was, you're basically forcing us to try to acquire, you know, all your investments that are going bad. And I believe you're doing this to deceive investors because you tell investors you've never had a losing controlling investment when you have. And here's two that you're trying to force us to acquire to cover up the fact you're having these losses. Um, and, and, and that was more or less the substance of the lawsuit. And I thought that was a little crazy. And it turns out the board member was fired the next day after sending that email to Vista. And then I kept digging and I found out one of the portfolio companies that had been uh, performing poorly had also sued Vista. And what this portfolio company alleged was that Vista was intentionally mismarking um, the value of this portfolio company. I think it was called Dealer Socket. And if you look at how Vista equity partners valued their investment in dealer socket. I think they invested at a $400 million valuation in 2014. They marked it up to 600, 700 million in June of 2019. And then three months later, marked it down like 95% over the course of just three months when there was no real special news event to cause it to be marked down 95%. And that, that, that's probably a sign that you're mismarking assets if you're taking a 95% write down for no reason. So I did that bit of research right after the tax fraud settlement came out and, and wrote a little write up on it that got some attention in the investing community. And then I kept digging because, you know, there's never just one cockroach in the kitchen. And it turns out Robert Smith. Um, the founder of Vista, who was involved in the tax shenanigans, also is close friends with a guy named Nate Paul, who is a Texas real estate developer, who's also been raided by the FBI and, you know, has been involved in a few government investigations and is close friends with the Texas attorney general, who's now embattled. And it turns out this guy, Nate Paul, who is... Um, who managed some of Robert Smith's money had supposedly bribed the Texas attorney general or, and hired like the Texas attorney general's mistress to help cover up misconduct. And, you know, so Robert Smith is having these issues and his close friend in Texas is also, you know, seemingly involved in a lot of bad stuff. And, you know, some of the portfolio companies are suing Vista, alleging that the Vista is mismarking assets. Um, and when you put it together, I, I thought, you know, this is pretty bad looking from Vista's perspective. But none of the media paid attention to it, which is really frustrating to me. And I think it shows that oftentimes when there's a scandal, I think there's a lot of groupthink in the media and everybody will cover the same thing in the same way. When in reality, if you take a step back, there's other substantive issues that often get missed. So the media likes to cover all wrongdoing, but it doesn't do a great different job at differentiating what's really bad and like what's extremely bad. 
or, or what's somewhat bad and extremely bad. So, so the tax fraud stuff was pretty bad, but there's also a lot of other bad stuff going on that like didn't get any coverage. And I think if you included that and looked at the other lawsuits, you'd have a much, much more negative view of Vista Equity Partners. So that's one case where I, I think I did some digging on a high profile issue and it, it changed some people's views.